Hi, I'm Kelly Davis. You know, back when I was in school, some of my biggest concerns were what I was going to wear the next day, who had a crush on whom, and did I pass that last major exam? Well, today, kids are still concerned with such things. But our teachers and educational workers in schools face many more serious and daunting issues than style, relationships, or even grades. One of those issues is exposure to bloodborne pathogens, or BBPs. In today's working world, over 5.6 million workers are at risk for exposure to BBPs. 5.6 million. That's over 56 major college football stadiums filled to capacity. Almost three quarters the population of New York City. Over 12.5 times the population of Albuquerque, New Mexico. And over 92,000 times the population of Branson, Missouri. Now that's a lot of country music. Yeehaw. Of those 5.6 million, many are healthcare workers and public safety officials. But another large group at risk to exposure is you, our teachers and educational workers. While most students are innocent enough on the outside, some could unknowingly be harboring a potentially deadly disease. Your possible exposure to these bloodborne pathogens could prove hazardous, if not fatal. Bloodborne Pathogen Fast Facts for Schools. Bloodborne Pathogen Training, as you know, is an annual requirement. Now let's be honest with each other. Watching a training video isn't always that much fun. That's why we've created this program. Bloodborne Pathogen Fast Facts. So, I'll make a deal with you. You pay close attention for the next 15 minutes or so, and I'll make this as quick and painless as possible. You'll probably be reminded of several facts you already know, and you may even pick up some helpful tips on dealing with bloodborne pathogens. Tips that could save your life. Even if your job at this school may carry a minimal risk, it's important for you to be reminded about bloodborne pathogens and how to stay safe. So, as we view these fast facts, you'll be reminded of what a bloodborne pathogen is, how you can be exposed, ways to prevent or minimize exposure, and what to do if you are exposed to a bloodborne pathogen. Fast fact number one definition Bloodborne pathogens are a disease causing organism found in the blood and certain body fluids of an infected person. You can't tell that someone is infected just by looking at him or her. In some cases, a bloodborne pathogen may not cause symptoms for years, sometimes never. This means people can look and feel fine and spread the virus without knowing they're infected. For this reason, you should always treat blood and body fluids as infected material and take steps to protect yourself. Better safe than sorry. Fast fact number two, the usual suspects. There are three BBPs you need to be aware of when dealing with blood and other body fluids. Human Immunodeficiency Virus, or HIV. Hepatitis B Virus, or HBV. And Hepatitis C Virus, or HCV. These guys don't play by the rules and have nothing but harm in mind for you. Hey, you wanna hang out with us? <laughs> You talking to me? Human Immunodeficiency Virus, or HIV. HIV attacks a person's immune system, eventually destroying their ability to fight infection. A person may carry the virus and live a normal, healthy life for years. 
Some people infected with HIV go on to develop AIDS. Blood tests can diagnose this blood-borne disease, but no vaccine or cure has yet been developed. Hepatitis B virus, or HBV, and Hepatitis C virus, or HCV. Hepatitis B and Hepatitis C are both viral infections that affect the liver. Hey, she called this viral. As many as 30% of those infected with HBV and 80% of those with HCV may not show signs or symptoms. These signs and symptoms may include jaundice, fatigue, loss of appetite, nausea and abdominal pain. An HBV or HCV infection can eventually lead to chronic liver disease, liver cancer, or even death. The only way to detect HBV and HCV is through a blood test. There is a vaccine available to protect you against HBV. However, there is no vaccine for HCV. Fast fact number three, transmission. HIV, HBV, and HCV are all transmitted in the same way, through contact with an infected person's blood, body fluid containing visible blood, or through sexual transmission. To actually contract HIV, HBV, or HCV, the virus must get inside your body. <laughs> These viruses aren't spread through the air, so you won't get them by working near someone who is infected, or even through casual contact. In the school environment, your chance of becoming infected is very small, but it could happen. Fast fact number four, doorways. Fortunately, your skin provides a natural protective barrier against bloodborne pathogens. To get through your skin, the virus needs a doorway into the body, such as through unprotected sex, sharing a needle with an infected person, a cut, scratch, razor neck, skin abrasion, dermatitis, or acne. Getting blood or a body fluid in our eyes, nose, or mouth is another way. These viruses may also enter your body indirectly if you touch a contaminated object and then touch your mouth, eyes, nose, or open cut. It's important to know that even dried HPV can survive on surfaces at room temperature for at least a week. Fast fact number five, exposure control plan. To help protect you, your employer has an exposure control plan, which is always available to you. This plan is a requirement of the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, and will list the potential hazards of each job and explain how to reduce your risk. Fast fact number six. Everyone has a BBP. Now that's a big overstatement, but it is how you should view everyone when dealing with blood and body fluids. Standard or universal precautions require you to consider every person a possible carrier of a blood-borne pathogen and to treat his or her blood or body fluids as if they were infected. Fast fact number seven, bleeding emergency. When assisting someone who is bleeding, follow these precautions. First, send someone to call for emergency personnel if necessary. Next, protect yourself. Your instinct may be to rush to the injured person, but taking a few extra seconds to put on gloves can prevent infection. Gloves? Nobody's got time to be putting on gloves when someone's bleeding. You should always use disposable latex or vinyl gloves when dealing with blood. Always. But remember, gloves can tear or be punctured. Make sure to cover cuts or skin abrasions on your hands with bandages before putting on gloves. Never reuse disposable gloves or use gloves that are damaged. If you are allergic to latex, check with your supervisor about alternate types of gloves available. Nowadays, they even come in a pretty designer purple. Fast fact number eight, glove removal. And now, a review of the fine art of proper glove removal. When removing gloves, follow this procedure.
Carefully peel one glove from the top of the wrist to the fingertips. Then, hold it in the gloved hand. With the exposed hand, peel the second glove off, tucking the first glove inside the second. Dispose of the used gloves promptly and never touch the outside of a glove with your bare skin. After removing the gloves, wash your hands as soon as possible with non-abrasive soap and water. Rinse completely and dry with a clean towel. The use of an alcohol-based hand sanitizer is also acceptable. But you should still wash your hands as soon as possible. While removing gloves may seem mindless and simple, it is very important to do so correctly to prevent accidental exposure. Fast fact number nine, resuscitation. If you need to give mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, protect yourself by using a mechanical respirator or a pocket mask. Fast fact number 10, wardrobe malfunctions. At any time, if any of your protective equipment is penetrated by blood, remove the item and replace it immediately. Fast fact number 11, cleanup. If it's your job to clean up blood or body fluids, follow these precautions. One. Always wear gloves to protect your hands from contact with blood and other infectious material. Two, if there are large amounts of blood, wear a smock to protect your clothing. Three, whenever possible, use disposable materials such as paper towels to absorb blood. And four, dispose of all materials according to your school's policy. Fast fact number 12, no hands. When cleaning up contaminated sharp objects such as glass, use a broom and a dustpan. Never use your hands. Fast fact number 13, garbage removal. If you empty garbage cans or laundry bins, always pick up and carry bags by the top. Never hold them against your body or place a hand underneath to support them. Sharp objects can penetrate bags and cut you. Fast fact number 14, potential exposure. If you think you've been exposed to HIV, HBV, or HCV, do not panic. Most exposures do not result in disease transmission. Clean up and immediately, or as soon as possible, report the incident to your supervisor. This way, any post-exposure treatment can begin right away. Your employer will advise you about testing, counseling, and any follow-up steps. Remember, being exposed to an infectious material does not mean you are automatically infected. All this hoopla over BBPs and, and blood and body fluids? Who can remember all this stuff? It's not that big of a deal. Why should I even bother? Uh, because BBPs can kill you. It is that big of a deal and you should bother. BBPs, at their very least, can make yours or someone else's life miserable. And at their worst, they can become a matter of life and death. And now, some quick tips. And finally, here are some other quick tips to remember concerning BBPs. Keep soiled hands away from your eyes, nose, and mouth. Always wash your hands before eating, drinking, smoking, handling contact lenses, or applying cosmetics or lip balm. If blood or body fluids enter your eyes, nose, or mouth, flush the area with running water as soon as possible. Wear gloves whenever you may be exposed to bloodborne pathogens. When assisting someone who is bleeding, try to get the person to stop the bleeding by using direct pressure. Don't clean up potential BBPs if you're not trained or authorized to do so. So there you have it, the fast facts about bloodborne pathogens. Not too painful, huh? Five point six million. It's a sad reality in our schools today that you have to be cautious and aware of bloodborne pathogens and the diseases they can cause. Yet it is a reality. By following these guidelines you've seen here today, you can keep yourself safe and healthy. And in today's working world, you can never be too careful. For Working World, I'm Kelly Davis. Work smart, work safe.